So we finally have an update on the A7S III firmware and I want to share my thoughts on it today. You might have stumbled on some of my videos talking about the firmware updates when it comes down to the Sony cameras and how much of a, you know, kind of disappointment they've been over time and how much Sony has kind of held back on what they could give us with each camera with firmware updates that could be very obtainable. And today is one of those days that we're going to kind of review of the new setup that the Sony A7S III got with the firmware update. If you haven't updated your firmware update, I suggest that you go ahead and use it because obviously it's always nice to have a firmware update for your cameras which to be honest it makes the sony a7s3 feel like a new camera to a certain degree now before I dive into kind of what all it really did for updates and everything, I kind of want to touch base on the one most important thing that this let me know and that made me learn about Sony, is that if Sony wanted to, they could. And what I mean by that is that after the update of the Sony a7S III's firmware update, it really showed me that they can add a lot to a camera and that they're choosing not to. What I mean by that is that now that with the new firmware update, you have it where it looks like to be honest, my ZV-E1, which this is supposed to be a newer camera compared to my Sony A7S III. Now you have a little bit more of the touch functionality that you can do with the ZV-E1 on my Sony A7S III, which to be honest, is a big of a firmware update. So that's very cool to have because now it feels like I'm using the same camera, which makes it easier to go off and on from each other rather than feeling like I'm using a little bit of a different camera. But one of the things that I'm very sad about still is that they didn't update to give us the custom LUT you know, function that the ZV-E1 does and a lot of the newer cameras by Sony have. They added it to the FX3, which that means they could have added it to the Sony A7S III, especially after this firmware update to showcasing how much they updated the screen and what you can do with like the touch screen and everything with this camera that's a lot older. They could have easily added the custom LUT, you know, function that the ZV-E1 has to have it on the A7S III to make life easier when it comes down to filming. For me personally, I try to use the screen on my camera the most because when I'm out and about, I don't want to have to lug around a like, you know, you know, another separate monitor or anything like that. So that was one, honestly, one of the things that I would just want most for my Sony A7S III that could be actually obtainable after looking at how this firmware update happened. See now that you can do a lot of like touch screen kind of style with the A7S III that I can do with my Sony ZV-E1 kind of shows me that they could, it's just they're choosing not to. And despite having a nice firmware update, which was more than needed when it comes down to this camera for how old it relatively is and how great of a camera it still is to today's standards, it makes sense. But for me, I'm a little bit disappointed and I know there's going to be some person commenting because they've done this before and I've talked about this, but I like to bring awareness so that if the more we talk about it, the better products we'll get. I believe that as a consumer, there's always going to be that one person that's going to be like, if you don't like it, then switch camera companies. Or if you don't like it, just be grateful about it. Just get a different camera. I've had somebody try to tell me that I should just go ahead and buy a different camera because my Sony a7S III can't have that. Then I should just go get an FX3, which Sure, I mean, I guess you could do that, but in reality, I shouldn't have to. Because at the end of the day, the promise of the Sony A7S III was high. It was the new and mighty kind of style. And then they came really relatively after with the FX3, which kind of seemed like a punch in the gut for most you know, users that wanted to get the A7S III because it's supposed to be a video camera. And then you get the ZV-E1 with having all those features that come with it, which obviously I'm not saying, hey, with a firmware update, give me more, you know, the dynamic access stabilization because I'm not really, maybe could it handle it, you know, because that's different, maybe hardware and stuff like that inside of the camera or as well with the AI because it doesn't have the chip for it. What I'm asking is something that you can just literally overlay onto your screen, just like how they did with this, where I can just swipe in, swipe out to be able to have the custom buttons that I have on the side that I have like with I do with my ZV-E1. But overall, obviously having a nice update is always nice, minimum, but I'm still holding Sony accountable and I kind of wanted to make this video about it to see your thoughts when it comes down to this update. Are you happy with the, you know, new A7S III update and even the A7 IV again on an update? Not really sure what all it'll do. 
to be honest, because it doesn't seem like it's anything crazy, but at least the A7S III feels like a new camera because of it. Because if you don't know, when you update it, you're gonna lose all your settings that you had within your camera because it's like updating everything to the new type of style that'll have it. So you just have to re-input your custom buttons, whether you have, you know, your one, two, threes, your C1, C2, C3, C4s, and so on and so forth. So just so you know when it comes down to that. This is not really kind of showing you how to, you know, set up your your camera with like the software update. You probably already have done the software update whenever you're seeing this video. If you haven't, you're probably curious to know what the heck's all about it. And that's why you're watching this video, which I appreciate, you know, kind of rumbling in, or stumbling into this rant kind of video that's not a rant. It's more about accountability because I believe that if I'm sp spending so much money on a brand and, you know, a camera and everything, I would hope they would want to hear inputs of their consumers because we're the ones really maintaining their lifestyle. So, you know, it's a mutual, you know, beneficial kind of partnership when it comes down to that because I spend money to make money. They get my money to make eventually more cameras that will make me more, you know, to switch over and so on and so forth. So the only thing that I think would add this camera to just be the pure perfect thing in reality that's realistic to be able to be done with a firmware update is just gonna be the custom LUTs integrated into the camera to be able to see how the images will look. And I'm hoping Sony will, you know, bring that little ace up their sleeve and just go ahead and say, hey guys, you know what, we wanted to add this for you guys too because the, the 4K DCI with a true 24 frames per second sounds great. I don't think most of us really will be using it. We'll be fine with the 4K 24 frames per second that the camera already has, but it's never you know hurtful to have that extra stuff. I know the A1 had a little bit of their updates, you know, breeding compensation and everything. And with this camera, I think the you know the update is nice and everything. It does make it feel like a new camera, which is always kind of a nice to have a little kind of fresh breath of air or whatever kind of style when it comes into a camera of yours that you've had for a while. Since I've had this since about 2021. So like about a year after it released, I was able to get my own. So it's been a while since I've had it and I've loved my ZV-E1, especially for the custom LUT button. It makes it so much easier to get the right white balance and everything that I wanna have for exposures and everything for my color grading. So I'm hoping that Sony will listen and give us that for a firmware update. And that's it. I honestly don't have anything else. I'm like not being an ungrateful person about like, oh no, add all this stuff. In reality, I would have been perfectly fine with just having the custom LUTs in camera to, as a firmware update and nothing else that we just got. I would have been fine with that. But I mean, everybody's gonna have their choice and their likes and dislikes, that's just mine. And hopefully, you know, it resonates with you that we can all comment below and get this video traction or tag Sony and other posts on social media that you find to let them know that we want custom LUTs integrated into our camera just to see what we can do because they can add it to the A7S III, A7 IV, and all the other cameras that don't have it because it's not, nothing too crazy in my opinion that they couldn't do already, especially after seeing what they added on this firmware update to how the functionality of the A7S III now to be used, like if it was a ZV-E1. That's just me, my personal thoughts. Hopefully they resonate with you. Let me know your thoughts down below if it's something that you'd be interested to get from Sony and a firmware update in the future, especially if you're having an A7S III, an A7 IV, and cameras like that that are kind of getting older in the spectrum of technology and in the spectrum of Sony cameras. I would love to know your thoughts down below to see what else you would like in a firmware update that could be realistically done that doesn't have to add any, you know, things that would be hardware driven or chips or anything. And to know, see, well, I guess to see what you would be into, to know what could happen maybe, you never know. Sony apparently listened a little bit. So we, we bullied them a little bit into this, which I guess is a good thing. So let's keep at it guys. But with all that said and done guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, share this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.